Welcome to part 1 of the Underwater World Shaders tutorial by Peerplay. In this tutorial series we will be using the noise function a lot. Before we start coding in Unity, it's important to have some understanding of what the noise function does. In this part I will visually explain the basics of what noise is. In 1985, Ken Perlin invented Perlin noise and has become a standard that is used in both computer graphics and movement. The process of layering multiple transformed and colored layers of pearly noise and derived forms of noise is used to create a wide variety of naturalistic and chaotic textures in computer graphics. It can be used to very realistically simulate clouds, grass, wood, stone, water, fire and innumerable other textures. To explain this visually, let's look at this 2D grid of cubes. The cubes are scaled to the output value of the Perlin noise function. Perlin noise is a so-called gradient noise, which means that you set a pseudo-random gradient at irregular spaced points in space, and interpolate a smooth function between those points. This means that each point is slightly different from its surrounding points in its x and y axes. Let's look at some pseudo-code of generating 2D Perlin noise. We'll call the Perlin function and input a x and a y coordinate. The grid uses a certain increment value to specify how far to travel along the axis for its new point. We can increase or decrease this increment to see different resolutions. We can also increase the x value over time, creating a movement. We can also increase the y value over time to create a movement in its y axis. And if we increase the x and y offset, we'll create a diagonal movement. The output value of noise is between minus 1 and 1. The distribution of Perlin noise values are focused around the center, so only a few times the output number would be minus 1 or 1. In this graph, the most left bars represent minus 1 and the most right bars represent plus 1. The height of the bars represent how often this number will be chosen by the function. So in Perlin noise, most values are based around the center, making this function especially smooth. A great implementation of Perlin noise is applying them to a transform. So here's a cube game object. We can move this cube in its x, y and z axis based on Perlin noise. We don't even need three dimensions because we can simply set a higher offset to the calculation of the noise and look for a number further along the time in space. We can also apply this to the rotation of the cube. And of course we can also apply it to the scale of the cube. And when we combine them all together, we see a moving, rotating and scaling cube based on Perlin noise. Let's go back to the grid. Besides Perlin noise, there are more implementations of noise. This is simplex noise, which has a more equal distribution of values, making the differences more visible. Another implementation of noise is the so-called cellular noise, where the values are more rounded, creating distinctive cells. Now we've looked at noise in two dimensions, but this gets really interesting when we add a third dimension. Let's add a third dimension to the grid of cubes. All cubes in the grid will now respect the values of the surrounding cubes in three axes. Now instead of moving the noise in X or Y, we can move the noise in its Z direction as well. Now if we represent the 3D noise in two dimensions with a shifted z-axis, we can see some movements that look like water. Hopefully you will now have a basic understanding of what noise is and how it works. In the next part we will start creating the ground shader and offset the vertex based on noise. This tutorial series is made possible by the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you would like to support me creating free Unity tutorials about audiovisuals, algorithms and shaders, you can become a patron as well. You will then get access to all exclusive source file content of the tutorials. Go to patreon.com slash peerplay for more information. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you would like to stay updated to new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Hope to see you again in the next part. Happy coding.